Hello, welcome to EasyOds.com. My name is Ross Casey, and I'm here with the dehydrated Jake Johns. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so we're here for the big, big uh, festival coming up in, in horse racing, Royal Ascot. Really looking forward to it. It's a massive week coming up with Euros and Royal Ascot. It's going to yeah. be a busy, busy week for us at Easy Odds. But don't worry, Jake Johns has got it covered. Not only does he have tips for the main races, he'll have tips for every day, pretty much every race on, on, channel, on channel 4, right, Jake? Yeah, I'll try, I'm going to try and get most races done. I might miss out a couple, but, you know, I'll I'm sure, try. And I'm sure that, that, that you'll have a few um, Ackies thrown in. Yeah, a couple of Ackies. There'll be money to be made at Ascot, and this is the man to do it, because just last week, you managed to find a 20 to 1 winner in the derby, as advised in these videos. Yeah. I hope that, st that some of you got on. Mm -hmm. um, not many would have got the 20s, because his, his price plummeted. Yeah, well, I advised to get on at the time of the video, which was about a couple of weeks before the actual derby. I think it was about a week and a half before the actual derby, because the weather was pretty unsettled but it, they didn't expect as much rain as they did and they got way more rain than they, they expected. Yep. The ground was described as good to soft on the day but it just wasn't good to soft, it was dead which is really really bad basically, get some weird results um, but soft ground specialists usually do well on dead ground and he's definitely a soft, soft ground specialist. But yeah he was 20 to 1 when advised, I advised him to bet with him then rather than bet on the day because his price was going to go down so much and if it was soft enough, he wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, he was going to run. If it wasn't soft enough, he wouldn't have run. So, and his price was obviously going to go down. I said it was going to be half the price. It was even more than that. He actually went off thirteen to two, which is in, pff, unbelievable. Um, but yeah, twenty to one. Happy with that. Really happy with that. Humphrey Bogart, the other one advised, actually ran really well into fifth as well. And uh, quite a few. Well, a couple of firms were doing five places, and you could get forty to one in the morning. So that wow. was also also really good. But um, yeah, really happy with that. Twenty to one. Um, my biggest winner for a while. So, well, I'm, I'm doing pretty good in these YouTube videos, actually. Really, really my, good. The daily tips are, aren't going great this week, but, you know, in the YouTube That's the way videos, it goes sometimes. Yeah. But that's all history now. Let's yeah. let's move forward to the future with Royal Ascot next week. We're yeah. going to just look at um, Tuesday for this video. Yeah. Starting with the Queen Anne Stakes. Yeah, we're just going to look at day one, I think, of Royal Ascot in the videos because day one is... Um, Obviously, unbelievable. It's probably the best British racing day that there is. Uh, there's three Group Ones, really nice uh, Ascot stage, really good ha uh, long distance handicap. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's a really quality day. I'm just going to look at the Group Ones. Uh, we'll start with the first race of the meeting. Really, really good race. You, you, kind of probably one of the best races in the meeting. Maybe not this year, but usually it is. It's known for being top quality. Um, Queen Anne Stakes. Now, Solo won this last year. Uh, Pretty um, underrated, I feel. Um, I talk, talked about this in my really early um, Ascot tips and the early Ascot tips that we did, the preview video we did a long time ago. But um, I don't think he was he was out then. He might have been actually, but I don't think he was. And yeah, he's won ten. He's won ten on the bounce now, including five Group Ones. Yeah, he won this last year really impressively. It wasn't an amazing race, but he did, he did it well. He always just does enough. Um, but Freddie Head broke the news that he wasn't going to. Uh, he's injured. Well, he's he's, had, he's suffered a setback and he's not going to be right in time for the race. So. But I, I already opposed him before any of that. Um, and of course, if you back anti-post, there's no rule fours or anything like yeah. that. So, Tepin, I tipped her. This is an American wonder mare. I tipped her at uh, 10 to 1 back in April. Um, she caught my eye last season in America uh, when she was just getting markedly better with each run. She was breaking track records left, right, and center. And she was doing it easier and easier each time as well. It was pretty insane. Um, she gained kind of worldwide recognition in the um, Jenny Wiley stakes at Keeneland, uh, where she absolutely bolted up, demolished her rivals, coasted home. Uh, she wasn't even nearly finished there, though. Uh, Churchill Downs this year, day of the Kentucky Derby, or 99.9% .9 of people were, would have been watching the Kentucky Derby, <laughs> seeing if Nyquist can uh, kind of justify favouritism. Um, but I was much more interested, uh, well, obviously I was interested in the Kentucky Derby because yeah. it's a huge race, but I mean, Teppin was my tip from a long time ago and uh, I've been following her for a while now and she absolutely bolted up in the uh, Distaff Turf Mile. Um, she was unbelievable. It was, dev it was devastatingly brilliant performance. I mean, one of the best performances, flat race performances yeah. I've seen this season. Uh, she came around the bend, race was over. Absolutely over. She coasted home again, more impressive than ever. Um, of course, we don't know how she's going to run on the straight mile at Ascot. Um, I don't think she'll front when she can. She can. She's not. She's not. A, she's definitely not a hold-up horse. But she likes being on the front end, and it's difficult to front run on that straight mile. But 
she I just think she's a long way clear of these uh, these English horses. Um, uh, yeah, I, what's to say she can't improve again? I mean, it, she's improved with each run the last like four runs. Um, I don't think she. I'm pretty sure she can improve again. Pro time test will probably go elsewhere because it's bit over, better over a little bit further. I think. Um, yeah, he, he, she's going to be good on. I mean, the the forecast is a bit odd. I mean, I, they they said it's going to meant to rain for the last three days and it hasn't rained at all. We've, we've had a couple of sudden downpours because of thunder. Um, if it's meant to rain over the weekend, it's meant to rain all of next week. So. Yeah, like, I really don't know how we're going to get soft ground for my other tips, but I think she will be okay. Obviously, Bellardo is a second in the market, um, and he's a he's a super, he, he loves a bit of, bit of soft ground. Um, but she's actually also won on soft ground. Uh, in her only start on soft ground at Keeneland, she won by six lengths in a group one. So she probably handles the ground anyway. Yeah. Um, she But she's not used to it. Um, but I still would be going in on her anyway. I think she's about seven to two at the moment, best price. Um yeah, that that's still good. That's still good price, I think. Um, okay, so that's the pick for the Queen. But hopefully, some of you got on at ten to one. Absolutely. Um, I just, did. Just uh, briefly on tapping, Jake. Um, you were saying that 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 you've been following that horse for some time. Yeah. Um, of course, with Easy Odds, we do have the horse alert system. But it would be is, difficult. You can't follow um, them. Though. Once once it runs in England, then you can. Yes. So once it once a horse runs in 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 the UK. Um, it will be eligible to be tracked in our Easy Odds system and mm -hmm. make sure that every time that, that that horse runs in the future, then you will get an email on the day of the race yeah. saying, don't, uh, basically, don't forget that that, that um, horse that you've been following from six months ago and possibly have forgotten about, don't worry, because Easy yeah. Odds have you covered. Yep. We'll send you an email with the race that, that it's running in that, and the form that it's in mm -hmm. and the current price and one click away and you've placed a bet on that horse. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's it's really useful for a, bit, a little bit more unknown horses because sometimes they enter them and you obviously don't know if you're thinking about if you're following loads of horses and stuff. Yeah, because your stable can be as big as you want it to be. You can make as 100,000 horses if you want to. <laughs> How many is in yours? I don't know. Quite a few. There you go. Quite a few. Not not 100,000, but yeah. <laughs> enough. Enough. Yeah. Okay, so moving on from the horse lips, which of course you should check out on Easy Odds. Um, we're going to now look at the King Stand Stakes, Jake. Yeah. What's your pick for this one? I love the King Stand Stakes. It's one of an absolute furious pace. Um, it's pretty hard to discern who's going to win. It's, there's a lot, usually a big field. Um, the favourite this year is Acapulco, but uh, he's uh, uh, he was... <laughs> well, not, not he. She was an absolute monster as a two-year-old. So, it was insane. About twice the size of all the other horses. But yep. probably going to run in the Commonwealth Cup because they're still three-year-old. Um, and, uh, yeah... Eligible for that, so I don't know why it wouldn't, wouldn't go there. And also, it might be not not great on soft ground either. But I did these tips quite a while ago, um, and I just assumed it was going to be good, good to firm ground because it's the middle of June and it should be because it's summer. But you know, England and uh, <laughs> it might be not be good, good, good ground. But hopefully, it is because it's day one, um, and I'm just hoping this forecast rain doesn't doesn't come because if it does, it's, it's not it's not it's not great. Okay. But I really, really like Gold Dream. Uh, he was he is this this will be his uh, seasonal appearance. He won this last year. He's apparently going really, really well at home. According to Robert Cow, he was the king of training sprinters. Um, he was taken out of the temple due to the ground. He was taken out of Shanty um, on Derby Day due to the ground. Um, hopefully, there's not that much rain. I mean, if it's good ground, he's going to be all right. He's he'll be okay. He want it. He want it good to firm. He'll be good on good ground. He may even be okay on good or soft, but he will want the quicker, like the better, basically with him. Yeah, he, he's he's won his last on his last two visits to Ascot. He won this last year ahead of Medician Man. At the time, it looked like kind of a strange race because Medician Man isn't amazing. Anyway, he's not known to be amazing. He hasn't done that well since, and he got really close there. But he's pretty good at Ascot actually, Medician Man. And uh, the time was really quick as well. Um, and then uh, Goldring went to win the Prix de la Bay. Um, and so he's obviously a top-class sprinter. But if you win the uh, Prix de l'Arbe and the King Stand in one year, you're obviously absolutely top-class. Yeah. So, yeah, he, he would be great. If it was good ground, good to firm ground, I'd love him a lot. He would be my pick. And then also, I like, another one I really like is uh, Jungle Cat. Um, good old him are talking him up um, massively as a two-year-old, as this kind of superstar. Um, disappointed uh, at three, um, three years old, kind of, uh, over six and seven furlongs. And then, but then he, he improved... 
it, he showed a lot, uh, big improvement at Maidan over the autumn and uh, winter, and then was even more impressive in the Palace House uh, in his first run this season in, in England at Newmarket behind Profitable, who's he's probably going to go here as well. Was also ridiculously improved, but. He was hugely eye-catching because he came down the centre of the course completely by himself. No, ever, uh, yeah. Two groups either side of him. So he's running on his own with no rivals and he still only went down by half a length. That was on good to soft, so he, he probably handles good to soft. He, he probably will like good ground a little bit better. He's obviously... Re- was They fancied him as a, as a, when he was younger and he's obviously improved this season. And yeah, he was hugely eye-catching running down the centre. Um, yeah, so I, and he's and he's twenty five to one. Um, well, he's twenty five to one when I did the tip. I'm not one hundred percent sure what he is now, but yeah, that's a pretty good price as well. Obviously, if it comes up really soft, then that's going to be to play to Mecca's angel strength. She was pretty. Uh, she looked like she needed the run last time in the temple, um, but it's still pretty good. And she went yeah. way too short for that. I mean, she was meant to be a certainty, but she was. It was her first run of the season. Um, yeah, it was, it, she was. I think she was like evens or something. But then, she, but she, I th- think she will come on for that run. She's obviously going to like the soft yeah. ground if it is soft. So still, that's another still one. Still got a second place finish in the still temple. Got, right? Yeah, still got second place finish, and that's still. Um, I mean, yeah, it's obviously going to play to us. Thing. She loves the soft ground, but yeah, I, I'm going to be going with Gold Dream and Jungle Cat. Twelve Gold Dream twelve to one, Jungle Cat twenty five to one. Hopefully, we don't get that much rain. Excellent. Uh, just to, to remind people, that is um, twelve to one outright on on Gold, on Gold Dream and each way on Jungle Cat. Oh yeah, each way on Jungle Cat. Twenty five to one. Twenty five to one. More big prices from Jake Johns. He doesn't. Um, Pussy around I've with already won a twenty-five to one good old Finn this year. Absolutely, flash so, fire. And as we've already Victoria said, <coughs> your form in these videos is absolutely excellent. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> so <laughs> let's move on to the final uh, race that we're going to tip in this video, it, in particular at Royal Ascot, the yep. St James's Palace Stakes. Yeah. Okay. This is the final Group One of Day One, um, free rolled race. Um, the Gurkha is currently favourite. Uh, Overcame colic twice as a, a, a when he was younger, which is unbelievable. It was pretty difficult to come over because it's, yeah. a, mass, it's a massive thing. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a wonder horse already just by get, doing that. He was really really impressive in the French Guineas, but I just I don't think that was a great race. Uh, these these French classes have not been that good this year. Um, he's probably been the most impressive three year old colt for um, uh, AP O'Brien though. Uh, he beat Tepin and Zarak that day, well Teppin was, I think was third, Zarek was a bit further back and they came second and third in the French Derby last time, but the French Derby was just terrible, absolutely awful race, um, but they came second and third. He's probably likely to improve again for that run as well, but he's short, he's, he's just AP O'Brien, really, really short, six to four. Yeah. Um, I know they like him at home, but they, they you know, there's a, they, they, they like a lot at home and they always say, they, you know, this is the best horse ever <laughs> or whatever. Um, PR genius. And it just, and it just isn't. They, I, don't, I just, I wouldn't trust what he says to be honest. But he obviously has a chance. Uh, I mean, he's obviously go, gonna be. He's, he's six to four. But I think, to me, that's just too short. I think, I think there's too much of a difference between him and this. The next horse that I'm about to, the one I really like. Okay. Ortard. Won his last four. Won the RS two thousand guineas last time. Um. Possibly, people, some a couple of pun- uh, punters might think that he's a bit of a mudlark. Uh, seems to go really well in the mud, anyway. Uh, but the first of that, the, the, of those four wins, came at the Curra, who beat where he beat Bravery by uh, I think it was two le- over two lengths. So Bravery's a pretty good horse. Um, it, really impressive. That that was the end of last season. Uh, end of uh, last run in 2015. Only had two runs last year. He's been outstanding this season. Incredibly good. Unbelievably good. Impress. In, in fact, so he's been unbeaten in three runs this year. He's improved markedly with each run, which is impressive anyway because he's been running in top class races. Uh, he won a handicap of top off top weight uh, by five lengths of ninety five. Uh, he's given a given a lot of weight away that day, and it was incredibly, uh, really, really impressive. Uh, ble- beat Blue De Vega next time, who I actually really fancied for the RSG thousand guineas. I thought uh, he was going to improve massively um, for 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 the run and maybe go past Ortard, but. Um, I mean, I'm not going to be. I'm not one of those pe- tipsters or you know hunters that just like sticks with one horse because I tipped it already. Yeah. So I'm not. Gonna, I'm not just going to carry on. Like I've got new evidence. I mean, he got destroyed. I mean, he got put in his place. Basically, he got destroyed by Ortard in the RSG Thousand Guineas. Ortard travelled like an travelled so so well into the race. Everything else was off the bridle. Uh, powered clear of Galileo Gold close home. I can't see Galileo Gold, Gold or Blue De Vega reversing form. Galileo Gold. Uh, I mean. Th- he, he, 
Uh, Hugo Palmer said that he wants good to firm ground and he wants fast ground, but I just can't see it. Honestly, I can't see him getting past him. It's probably not going to be good to firm ground anyway, looking at the weather forecast. Okay. Even though that's what I'd like, and I still think he'd win if it was good. I'd, I still think he'd win if it was good ground. Good firm... I, I, I'd, I'd still tip him if it's good firm ground. I'd be a little bit more wary, but I still think he acts on good ground anyway. He'd probably get a better price at that. Yeah, oh yeah, you'd get a much better price. Conditions as you'd well. You'd get a much better price. But it, it, wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be that much better. I'd still think he'd be second favourite. Um, yeah, I don't really like the, two fa- the English 2000 Guineas form that much either. Um, Zonderland was back in the field and he won next time at Sandown, I think, uh, next time at Sandown. And it, I know that Clive Cox likes him a lot and he is pretty good as well. I think he's about 16 to, to 1 to this and he could run into a place. Um, it, if I was picking another one, it would probably be Zonderland uh, at a price, but my, my tip for this is going to be uh, Ortard. I think 3 to 1 is a, is a, is a cracking price. I think 3 to 1 is a cracking price. I just think there's too much difference between. <laughs> Him and the Gurkha, and I think three to one is a is a is a decent price. Excellent. So and that's three races. So that's three tips oh, there. Voice, <laughs> insane. It's so high. And as a as a Jake's voice cracks, so will the uh, bookies' uh, bank accounts because that man finds winners all the time. And let's just quickly run through um, your three tips again, Jake. Uh, okay, Teppin, who I tipped back in April, uh, ten to one, but I think she's about seven to two now. That's in the Queen That's in the Queen Anne, King Stand, um, Gold Dream and Jungle Cat, hoping for some good ground. Twelve um, to one and twenty five to one. Twelve to one and twenty five to one. Respectively. Respectively. And then Ortard in the St James's Palace at three to one. Excellent. So that's three tips there for Tuesday at Royal Ascot. And don't forget that we do have our exclusive Royal Ascot app, which is available now on the iOS and it features tips from Jake Johns and also quite a bit of background. Um, information also if you're interested in, in in the running of Royal Ascot and of course it will also have da- um, daily tips for every single day yep. um, so, so so it won't be just the group ones that you're tipping there will be um, plenty of other type of races as well including all the offers that we have um, running throughout that week there'll be quite a few price boosts there'll be loads of new player offers including I'm sure some some favourites at some really big prices so make sure that you get get the uh, Royal Ascot app to make sure that you get the best possible odds for Royal Ascot as well as the offers as well. So, so thanks very much for watching. This has been Ross Casey and Jake Johns for EasyOds.com. Make sure that you just click on the little watermark just in, in the corner of the screen there to subscribe to our channel to get our tips, including my daily tips for Euro 2016 throughout the whole tournament, as well as these tips from Jake in Ascot, as well as moving forward all of the anti-post races, the big races for each weekend. So thanks very much for watching. I've been Ross Casey and this is Jay Johns. Bye.